Hi everyone, um, and welcome to um, our UE4 2D side scroll. Sorry for the um, late recording and etc. Um, obviously, kids and, and family and things like that. Um, however, are we going to be continuing with our, our series? Um, and we've gone quite far at the moment. I mean, we, we started all the way from lesson one and we're actually all the way up to lesson seven um, now. And what we're going to look at in this session is we're going to be creating. Uh, or still working with our tile map. Um, if you could remember in our previous session, um, all we did is we made a very basic um, looking um, sort of tile map um, that our character could stand on and we could jump around and, and move around on our tile map. Um, but there are a few more features that we can look at um, inside the tile map, um, and that's something to do with layers. So if um, I turn over the screen so we can see what we're working with, um, this is where we left off last time in our, our front view and our viewport. Um, and what we did create was our tile map, uh, which is here. So if I have to open that up again, um, we can see that we've got a tile map with all our um, environmental pieces. So um, pretty much our level um, that we had created. Now, what we can do uh, is probably the best idea and something I've found works really well for me um, is that I'll always change this tile um, to, or this layer, shall I say. Um, and I'm actually going to call this level. Um, it's just a little bit more easier for naming conventions, um, and it makes our life just a lot more easier um, when it comes to working out exactly where we want to put things um, and how we want to fit them within our canvas or, or our area. Now, let's say, for example, I want to start adding maybe some environmental pieces um, to the work that I have been doing. Um, so what I'm going to do quickly, um, let me just, uh, we're going to need some type of, um, object to go onto our screen. So let's um, get uh, let's open up Photoshop. Oh my god, why don't I have Photoshop here? Let me start in Photoshop. Let's get that open. Uh, so let's open up our Photoshop program. Um, and we're actually going to open up our uh, our tile textures that we created because um, we're going to add something extra uh, into our scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to make something very simple um, for this episode. And we're not going to go anything too crazy. Um, into any design. Uh, so I'm just going to file new. Remember, 32 by 32 pixels is what we're working with currently. And we're going to zoom in and we're going to make something very easy. Um, so let's go ahead and make. Oh my god, I'm lagging so hard right now. Okay. So let's make something very easy. So remember, we're going to pick our colors. So I'm just going to go for maybe an orangey type of color. And I'm just going to make. Uh, let's make a pumpkin, eh? So it's probably the easiest thing to do. I press the wrong key. Good job, Wayne. That's what happens when you're running late. You start to stress out just a little bit. Um, so we're going to just make a pumpkin. Uh, nothing too fancy. As I said, we're just going to keep it very basic. Um, there's no need to make anything um, rather great. I'm just going to fill that with the orange. And what we're going to do is, what you do is obviously you do your three-tone colors and etc. But for now, I'm just going to I'm, I'm just doing something very simple. Um, we don't want to go anything too advanced. Why is that not changed? There we go. So let's. Um, I'm sorry if this is slightly out, but we're just going to make um, some eyes. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We we'll do the same again here, like so. Okay. So we're just going to make some eyes, um, and we're just going to make little mouth here, just to just to give them a bit of a smile. And um, obviously, you'll make your own. Our own artwork, um, but for this tutorial, we're just going to make a very simple pumpkin. So we're going to save that. Remember, we save as um, PNGs. Uh, so we're going to save as PNG, and we're going to save this as our pumpkin. Pumpkin. And what we need to do is we actually need to open up our actual tile sheet. So if we go open, uh, so we're going to actually open up the sprite sheet that we're working with. Now remember, always save the sprite sheet as a PSD, so we can always edit that later on. And we're going to put our pumpkin um, into our tile sheet. So remember, we just go File, and we're going to go Place Embedded. And let's just throw our pumpkin onto the sheet itself. Look at that good-looking pumpkin. And let's just place him. Yeah, let's just place him there. Um, why not? It doesn't really matter where we put him, as long as he's in these um, 32 by 32 grid spots. Um, it doesn't really matter exactly where we place that object. So we're going to save as, and we remember we don't we don't use the PSD sprite sheet. Uh, we can obviously save as a PSD just to make sure we do save it. 
Um, but really, we're going to save as a PNG because that's what we're using inside Unreal at the moment. Um, so we're going to just change that to PNG and save as our sprite sheet. Um, so yes, we do want to replace that. Say OK. And let's go back into Unreal. So as you can see, my sprite sheet here hasn't changed um, in the tile map. Uh, that's because we haven't re-imported our sprite sheet. So once we re-import um, the sprite sheet, you can see now I've got my, my pumpkin. Uh, so if you just missed that, you just right click and click on re-import and it'll re-import that, that sprite sheet that we did. However, uh, uh, currently the pumpkin doesn't have any collisions. So we're going to have to again go into our tile set this time. Um, if you're not too sure how to use tile sets, remember I made a tutorial on that. So you can always go back to that. And all we have to do is just add our collision box um, onto our pumpkin. Like so. So let's just throw that on um, like that. Okay, so that's just going to add collision. I mean, you don't have to add collision to everything that you have um, in regards to sprites. Um, but say, for example, it was a pickup item or, um, or anything on those lines, you might want to start adding some collision into some objects and, and stuff like that. But this is not really going to be a pickup. Uh, but I just want to show you um, what would happen if we have collision environmental pieces on our, on our environmental piece. So now I can go back to my tile map and you can see that my tile map has got my little um, happy-go-lucky uh, pumpkin. And I'm actually just going to place that on the map. Now I have to give my apologies that when we've created our um, sprites, I should have actually filled up the whole 32 by 32 blocks um, here. So that's why we've got this, um, this space. So again, apologies to the people that have been watching the video. Uh, all you have to do is really uh, push your grass up to the top and then fill the rest with the dirt. Um, that's my fault. I'm just rushing tutorials and stuff, which I shouldn't do. Um, but yeah, so again, apologies. So all I've all I've done is place the um, pumpkin onto our scene, which we have been doing um, for the whole of the uh, tile map that we've worked with. But I want to show you something because I've placed it in my level, and there is collision on that box. If I walk towards that box, you'll, or the pumpkin, you'll see that the character um, will then climb on top of that collision. Um, which is maybe something you don't really want to happen inside the game itself. Um, that you actually might want this um, to be in the background. Um, so you might want it to be behind the character. Or you might want the character to walk in front of it but still not collide with that object. Um, and we can quite simply do that. Um, all we have to do is create a new layer. Um, so I'm actually going to raise this pumpkin out. So we're going to get rid of him. And we're going to create a new layer. Um, and we're going to call this test. So really, this is all trial and error I found um, when, I, when it comes to working with this. And I'm going to paint my pumpkin in. So remember, I've now put this on a new layer, and I've called this test. And now if I play the game uh, from this view, so I'm going to play it, you'll notice if I walk the character, he's still climbing onto the box. Now remember, I said to you this is a bit of trial and error, uh, but I want to show you something um, which will help you um, to decipher this whole trial and error problem. We're going to minimize this, and we're actually going to change our view back to perspective. And what we're going to do is, in our viewport, we're going to actually look at our sprite. So if we have a, try and get it as, as quick as we can, or as clean as we can, if we have a look, here is our character. Uh, it's probably not the best view I'm showing you. But if we have a look, the actual pumpkin itself um, has gone in front, so because we made a new layer in front, it's actually moved itself forward. Um, and the actual grass itself, so the actual level we created, is on this backdrop here. Now, the issue that we have is that, yes, we place the character here on zero. But if I have a look um, at the tile map, it's also placed at zero. So we can see we have um, a small issue that we've got the character that runs quite nicely on the tile map. Um, but he's still going to bump into this pumpkin. So let's see if we can um, change it up a bit and see if we can fix the issue. So let's go back and open up our tile map. We're going to raise this out and we're going to make another layer. Okay, so we're gonna, just going to name this test2. So we're going to call that test2. And I'm going to draw my pumpkin on. So again, we're just going to paint the pumpkin. And I'm going to save. I'm going to test. So let's test to see what happens now. So the character is still actually jumping on that. But if we have a look, oops, I didn't want to play. But if I want to have a look at the perspective, 
you can see that the pumpkin is now actually pulling itself out even further. But the problem that we're facing is that the character also is moving with the tile. I don't know if you can see that, um, but the character is actually moving with that. If I decide to move the character backwards slightly, uh, let's not go too far, so slightly backwards like that, and Alt P, you can see that the character is still going to bump no matter where I put him um, on this area. So even if I put him at the back, he actually might fall through now. Actually, you no, know, he didn't. You can still see that he's actually going to collide. Um, oh, jeez, I just fell on the floor. Um, into these objects here. So this actual tile itself. Okay. We could get around this. Um, and we could actually, on our collision that we created for the tile, we could actually delete the collision. Uh, so we could actually take that collision out um, from the tile itself. So you can see I've just selected and deleted it. And if I save and play, you can see that we can now... Oh, why are you still colliding? There is no collision on you. Why you do this? Refresh. Save. Refresh. Just click on him. There shouldn't really be any collision at all. I'm not sure why the collision decided to come back again. Just select all that. Delete it just to make sure that we're getting rid of everything. So save. Oh, there you go. So we can put the collision on. You can see that those are the colliding tiles. So let's have a look and see what happens now if we play. There we go. So you can now see if we turn the collision off, we can see that the character is now behind that tile. Even if I had to put him back on the zero axis, on the Y, so we take him on the Y and play the level again, this time I'm going to go in front of the tile. So as I say, this is really to do with a lot of trial and error. Um, and to see exactly what you want to happen with inside your game. Myself specifically, what I prefer to do is put the character um, on the level. So I'll actually move him uh, so he's sort of flat against that level. And if I play, I can then start walking behind the objects. Which, in a way, could start causing a few issues. But we can change this around a little bit. Um, so what we could do is we could move this test all the way down to the bottom. So if I bring that all the way back, all the way underneath the level, so I've brought it behind, or you'd think it's behind the level. If we play the levels, so let's save that, and play the level, you can see I'm still gonna be behind um, that specific object. Even if I had to change myself into perspective view, oh no, sorry, I'm in front of you, I'm on the wrong one here. So even if I decided to put the character again back onto zero, okay, so I put him back onto the zero, so this time I'm not on the level, okay, so I'm, I'm not on the level this time, I'm just putting him on the same areas where my sheet is, and play the level, I'm now going to walk in front of it. So depending on how you set it out, um, is how you would probably like your environment to look. I mean... I know it, it, it's very confusing, this tutorial, um, on how you change your tile sets um, of how you want it to work. But as I say, it, it, there's a lot of um, trial and error in this um, on trying to see what best fits you um, when it comes to creating more than one layer. We do have options in the tile map, however, that we can actually change the separation um, of the tile. So we can actually drop um, the separation level. Uh, so we can actually drop a, um, we keep pulling it back. So we can actually start turning it into a negative layer. Um, so you can actually push it backwards um, behind all the, all the set, um, or you could pull it forward. It all depends on preference. Um, when I was starting to do all these um, sprites and creating these 2D platformers, um, I did the very hard way, which I just showed you, which is um, navigating the character around um, and moving him into places. But technically, what you could do is you could just separate um, the layers. So if I had to take that to negative four, that's actually going to put my my test two, which is my pumpkin, um, negative four um, on the Z. So if we had a look at what that would look like, let's just save that. Um, and we have a look what it looks like on our tile map. Okay, 
you can see not much really does change in regards to what we're working with here. So again, it's all about preference, um, how you want to orientate your layers. Um, I might revisit layers uh, in particular. I might um, go more into it. Um, however, I try and stay well away from layers. Um, I prefer, if I'm being really honest with you, um, is that with these types of sprites, I won't actually add these into my tile map. The only thing I'll do with the tile map is actually create the level, so the scene like this. Um, this is the only thing I would create. But if I was coming to things like these pumpkins, what I would do is I'd actually take the sprite out. So I'll take this sprite out um, from the sprite sheet, um, and then I'll then place it um, in my area. And I'll show you what I mean um, in regards to that. So let's just erase this. So we're going to get rid of everything we just created. So we're going to keep the level. So we'll delete all those. because oh, oh, man, it just crashed. Nice. Send and restart. So we're going to restart that. My bad. It's because it was on that first layer, um, and that's probably why it crashed. Um, so let's actually just move the level back down there. Delete that layer, and we could probably delete that. So now no crash. Um, and now all, all I've got is my, my, my area that I'm going to work with. Let's just change that back to four so we don't have any problems. And again, if I save and play, you can see that everything's back to normal. But what I would do is instead of drawing it in, and, and some people like doing it. I mean, this t these tutorials aren't set for you to do it one way. Um, there's many, many ways you can approach this um, on how you want to, you know, you want to organize it or, or move things around. But what we can do, or what I prefer to do, is with my pumpkin, remember I saved them as a PNG, what I can do is, in Unreal, I can actually um, import that. So I'm actually going to cheat a little bit, so I'm just going to import the pumpkin. I'm going to turn them into, obviously, a sprite, so I'm going to apply the paper 2D, and obviously then turn them into a sprite. So you can see it's now a sprite, and what I would do is I'll just place it like that. Very strenuous job, but I think that works best for me. And what I can do then is I can change the value of the Y. So if I had to play now, for example, you'll see that there is collision on that pumpkin piece. But if because that's a sprite, remember if we import it, it automatically gives it collision. But if I decide to go into perspective view and say, all right, well, I actually want this pumpkin to be behind the character, I'll just move it like that. And if I had to play now, you'll notice I can then walk in front of that pumpkin um, by just moving it um, how I feel fit um, in regards to the area. So remember, this, these tutorials are there to just show you that you can do different, different ways of adding environmental pieces into your, your scene. As you just saw, I like to add the pumpkin that way. Um, and even if I wanted to, I could go on the front view and I can actually line this up quite nicely. So I think that should be okay. So OP. No, it needs to go down a bit more. OP. And there we go. So it's now lined up against the floor. Don't forget there's all that transparency there. That's where the problem has come from. Let's move it across a little bit more. And there's the pumpkin. Not the best looking pumpkin um, at all. Um, it's definitely not. And then what I could do is if I want to keep adding some more into the environment, I do the old, good old traditional way. I'm holding Alt and then dragging them um, and then placing them into my scene so I can have multiple pumpkins within my scene, as you can see there. Okay. Again, thank you very much um, for watching this um, part of the tutorial. Um, I know it's rather confusing. I'm still trying to get my head around the whole Paper 2D um, section of, of using layers. Uh, I know there are some some also other really good tutorials out there um, that that helps with tile maps. But what I really wanted to show you is is the way how I would um, stay away from layers, but actually bring in the individual sprites and then just start placing them around the map. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, um, and hopefully I will see you in the next episode uh, where we're going to start doing a few extra fun features um, inside the 2D side scroller. Thank you very much, and I'll see you again later.